passed over Iwo Jima. This weekend, the U.S. is marking the battle's anniversary. Among those remembering, New Yorkers who dedicated the Iwo Jima statue aboard the intrepid Sea Air Space Museum. Jed Duvall reports on the day's principal observance near Washington. It remains one of the bloodiest engagements in U.S. military annals. 2,400 dead on the first day alone. The Defense Department has just released this Iwo Jima footage. Some of it has not been seen before. Japanese defenders were holed up and dug in, had to be blown out with grenades, burned out with flamethrowers, all 20,000 of them nearly one at a time. This was absolutely horrendous, horrendous. The carnage was brutal. And uh, I guess we, uh, maybe I put my head up, I don't recall. Next thing I know, I felt a projectile going through my neck and it was on my back and that was about it. PFC Jim Murphy. Murph and so many other Marines at the commemoration of awful carnage. How awful? On hearing of the casualties, President Roosevelt was reported to have gasped with horror for the first time since Pearl Harbor. On behalf of a grateful nation, I would like to ask all of those here who served at Iwo Jima to stand and be recognized. Among those who fought on the island 50 years ago, Colonel William Barber. I'm older now as you are, but I can still see the colors of that February morning, the sky, the island, and sometimes I think I can still hear the noise of battle. Yes, the colonel can still hear it. So can the men. So can Murph. Murph, who was wounded and wasn't supposed to come home. I went out on the DC-3 to uh, Guam, and I very vividly recall the doctor saying, uh, don't worry about Murph, he's this kid here, he's not gonna live till the morning anyway. You heard that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry about Murph, who did come home and raise a fine family and was proud and sad to be here.